<laughs> That's my new favorite Apple product. That could be the Frogger thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk about the three most interesting things that I saw in this week's Apple Keynote. So it's a couple of hours after Apple's keynote. They always release a couple of new iPhones in September. And here's the landing page. You can see there's the new iPhone 11 Pro. You can see there's a the new iPhone 11 and the watch. Those are the main things. So those are the main three things I'm gonna talk about. Um, and there's actually a couple of interesting things they did this year with the iPhone that I think not a lot of people really understood, but it was really cool and really interesting to see how they approached it from a product strategy point of view. The first thing I wanna talk about is the iPhone 11. Now the iPhone 11, on the surface, the, the kind of basic differences are better camera, couple of different colors, that's the main thing. That, th those are the main differences. That's not the interesting part. So the interesting part about the iPhone 11 in the keynote was that they kept comparing it to the iPhone XR, which was last year's sort of low-end iPhone. And I was wondering, while I was watching the keynote, I was like, why do they keep like comparing it to the XR and not the iPhone XS? Sorry, XR instead of whatever. So they kept comparing the iPhone 11, the new iPhone 11, to the XR and not the XS. So I was a bit confused, but I was starting to get suspicious. I was thinking, hmm, have they just decided to rename the low-end iPhone, the iPhone 11, to make it sound better and not like the cheap one? and then they're gonna just add something on top and that's exactly what they did. So this year's iPhone 11 is actually the low-end iPhone. It's actually the replacement for the iPhone XR. Rather than it being the big flagship phone this year, it's actually the low-end phone and I think it's a super clever way of allowing people to buy the cheaper phone but not really feeling like they're getting the crappy phone. And I think that was always the thing with their lower end phones. You didn't really want to buy them because you didn't want to be the person with the 10R, if you know what I mean, even though it's the most popular iPhone. So for me, I think it's a great strategic decision from Apple. Actually make things, makes things a little bit more understandable that every year there's just the iPhone and then the expensive iPhone that has the new fancy stuff that eventually the year later will go to the older version of the phone. So yeah, iPhone 11, really interesting. I love the colors. I actually really would love to get the yellow iPhone. Although then obviously they presented the real iPhone 11, which was the iPhone 11 Pro. So that's also the main um, part of their homepage, meaning from a strategic perspective, this is actually the flag flagship phone of 2019, 2020. Um, so the iPhone 11 Pro, Really interesting object, basically much better screen, much better triple camera system, um, also like this very nice matte uh, aluminium back. Um, so it's overall the nicer phone that everyone will probably want, but it's gonna be super expensive. Expensive meaning it's actually the price of last year's 10S, which is kind of interesting. So this is the real new phone this year, if anyone's confused. The iPhone 11 is last year's 10R, and now the iPhone 11 Pro is actually this year's 11. So what I really like about this phone, I, I actually, I found it kind of funny, um, we'll probably show that scene, uh, when they showed like the green, the gray, and the white, the green and the gray looked identical, um, but in the, uh, in, in the keynote, it looked exactly the same, and I was like, what, I don't get the difference. Uh, but yeah, now I see it in the landing page, and I've seen a couple of videos of it and it looks actually quite nice. It actually looks like um, there's this Wandered backpack. It's called the Privet or something. You can probably pull that up on screen. Um, it's basically the same color as that. It really reminds me of that. So yeah, the iPhone uh, Pro, iPhone 11 Pro, this is now the phone, I guess, every year that's gonna get the fancier upgrades. Although it's always hard to say with Apple what they're gonna do naming scheme wise because they're kind of crazy with their naming schemes. I think the long, the, the best name this year is, is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So that's the name of the larger iPhone 11 Pro. Very, very uh, great name. So yeah, iPhone 11 Pro, super interesting, much better camera. There's not much really to say here. I think the biggest upgrade that I think was surprising is that the screen is actually a higher resolution than the iPhone 11. That's something that I was actually surprised about and made it clear to me that the iPhone 11 Pro is really the iPhone 11 and the iPhone uh, 11 is actually 
the iPhone XR2. So it's, it's a bit confusing, but I think overall it's a better naming strategy from Apple's perspective. So the only other thing they really announced uh, that was interesting, in my opinion, was the Apple Watch Series 5. Um, they announced that pretty much at the very start. Now, the only thing you really need to know about the Apple Watch ser Series 5 that's different is that the screen is an always-on retina display. So you no longer have to do this to actually see what's on the screen, it's always on. So you can always see the time, you can always see the things that are on the screen. So it's obviously using a screen that now doesn't use a lot of battery when it's always on. We've seen this on Android phones for years. I was always wondering when Apple would actually do that. Um, they've got a couple of new materials as well. Um, so they now added titanium and ceramic. They used to have ceramic before, but it's back again. Um, and the other thing that I actually call, thought was quite cool was the fact that you can now mix and match the um, straps with the faces. So I always found that a little bit annoying when you're buying an Apple Watch online, you always had to just take like this strap with this face and, and often it was just something you wouldn't really want. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about that. So the Apple Watch Series 5, I think the Apple Watch is one of those slow and steady wins the race products. I don't think there's much competition on the market for a better smartwatch, the Apple Watch is really the best on the market without a doubt. No competition there. And what's really cool is they just, they just barely improve it every year, but those tiny improvements really add up to it being an excellent product. And I think this always on screen might be the thing that um, makes me check out this new Apple Watch Series 5. I have a, I think a Series 3, not on me right now, because I could just, once I forget to charge it, I just never put it on again. Um, but yeah, it's getting better and better and better every year. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely considering checking that out. Yeah, one of the things that people don't realize about Apple sometimes is that they're not a company that necessarily innovates. They're per, a company that just very slowly and patiently upgrades things until they get good. Um, I think the iPad is a good example of that, but the Apple Watch is really the best example. It started off kind of crappy. Um, people really didn't think it was gonna work out. And even the first three years of that product, people were like, ah, uh, and now it's starting to get better and better and better and better, and you just start to see it more and more. And I think, obviously, when you're a company with this much revenue, you have the time to be patient, to build a platform like the Apple Watch. Um, and I just think it's getting better and better every year with meaningful upgrades. Um, you know, when it comes to the last year with the, with the much larger high resolution screen, um, you know, adding cellular, actually making cellular work, and then this year having the always on screen. I'm impressed, I like it, but um, we'll see if I actually think it's useful. So yeah, those, that was basically what happened. There were some other things about Apple Arcade and Apple TV, et cetera, et cetera. Um, their services business, which is definitely gonna get more and more important, but I wanna actually see those things. I wanna see those interfaces before talking about them. Uh, but yeah, Apple's iPhone strategy, kind of interesting, changing names to sort of make the marketing more interesting, which I think is a very good idea. Um, their iPhone lineup is now pretty diversified. They still have the iPhone XR in there. Um, I think they still also have the iPhone 8 in the lineup. So they have a pretty good, like from, I don't know, like 399 to like 1199. Um, so they've got a great broad range of products there. Um, and it's getting slightly less confusing, which I think is very important uh, because like the way it was written, I know it's 10, but last year we had the XS, we had the XS Max, and we had the XR. Very difficult for the casual consumer to understand what's actually going on there. And this year, in terms of new phones, we have the 11 and the 11 Pro. Very easy for a normal consumer to understand. All right, so that's what I found interesting about this week's Apple event. Let me know what you thought in the comments, what you think about Apple's product naming strategy, and what you think about the new iPhones. Will you be getting one? I'm actually, I mean, I have the 10, so this is like, this has been a great device. I, I'm not sure what I really care about. Like, I mean, for me, I think the 11 is actually enough. Um, I really like the yellow 11, so I'm, I'm even considering that. Um, and I actually, I'm just, I just don't know. I, I mean, night mode is also good. Um, the, I always love upgrades to the camera quality, but overall, I'm not sure which one I actually care about. But I guess I'll probably end up getting the Pro 
just so that I have a product that lasts multiple years um, like this. I've had it now for two years and have absolutely no issues with it. So yeah, probably I'll go for the Pro. Let Wait a second, X, XS. Have I had this for three years? Maybe I've had it for three. All right, let me know what you think about Apple's launch in the comments. Are you bored? Are you excited? Are you one of those people on the internet who talks about how Apple is shit and therefore you will just write bad things about Apple in the comments anyway? Check out Jake and Jonathan podcast every Monday if you're interested in the product world and product strategy and all of these sort of things. Check out our Instagram channel at AJ Smart Design if you're looking for like an inside look at running a design agency. And uh, this channel every Tuesday, we have a new video. So check that out. Thanks for your time. Goodbye, everybody. I need, and I do like this green one. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. One thing. You forgot to tell me to press record on the screen recording. I was just gonna do that. Yeah, right. I was just gonna do that. Uh, yeah, can you... Okay, sorry. sorry. Where were we? Could you just, could you just... Sorry, could you just... Uh... That I think I'm not... That I think... That I... That I... <laughs>